Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So this is the Heroes of the Storm Sea Championship Malaysia Qualifier 3. And uh, we just saw a really crazy game, 1% core. I never thought it happened in a qualifier, but it did. And there's some numerous questions being asked about what the choices were and what exactly happened back then. But I guess like, the game is done and now we have got a uh, Papoy moving forward into the next stage of this um, particular uh well you could say qualifier and that's gonna be the semi-final so we have with us the next game and once again this is babel joining you guys from malaysia invasion and yeah so papoy versus ghost effectively this is one of my this is gonna be one of my favorite game it has to be we have got um ghost on the left hand side team ghost versus team papoy and the lineup here uh sorry before that it's very clear that we have papoy choosing the map dragonshire and goes now with the first ban of Jaina and first pick, of course. Uh, we also got Papoy with the ban of Sylvanas. That's it, we got the whole draft here. And if you look at this uh, lineup, we've got on Ghost, uh, Vala, Illidan, Anubarak, Zeratul, and Brightwing. So what this lineup wants to do is dive. They've got two very good melee assassins, Zeratul, Illidan. They got Brightwing. It's kind of interesting to see that they actually pick Illidan and Anubarak without Brightwing with Illidan first. Um, they've got the first pick, but they definitely would have gotten Illidan and Brightwing in the second pick. That would have been a little bit of a better draft because Brightwing is one of the best uh, counter against Illidan. But... Papoy didn't pick that up, they didn't want to have Brightwing on their side of the, of the house and it's a little bit of a different story. Um, this particular draft looks like it's a bit of a counter reaction kind of a thing. Uh, you can see very clearly that uh, Papoy would have gone for Anubrak as well, but I think it's still okay because he got Illidan and Kilthas is definitely in a lot of trouble once he got Illidan there. And if you got Brightwing as well, it's definitely going to be really, really troublesome for Kilthas to deal with all of this stuff. So that's it, we got Papoy. Uh, going for the ETC, Johanna, Kelthas, Rainer, and Uther lineup. But before we talk more about Papoy, let me finish up my closing sentences about Team Ghost. So this particular draft here has got a lot of dive com. We've got Anubar, we've got Zeratul, we've got Illidan. Brightwing should be looking at a potential teleporting into a Amro win for this instance. Um, not really expecting Brightwing to, to no, you know, say completely go Emerald Win as well. They can go, you can go for Blink Heal. Blink Heal is also kind of okay. But normally, as a dive comp, your job is to go in and burst someone down. You got Zeratul, Illidan just for that purpose, and Vala for consistent damage. Anubarak has got a lot of you know long reach, great extend, and also will be able to go in to do a lot of damage as well. Now for Papoy's lineup, it's a very different kind of a lineup. It's again CC centric. Two damage dealers, Rainer, Kilthas, Uther with a uh, very good Divine Shoe. Should be able to save one of two DDs there. And in general, I think that's a great sign for Uther being picked up. Now, I would have drafted this a little bit differently. I would say that Kelthas, Johanna ETC is very much overkill in the early phases here. They could have just given up on either uh, Johanna ETC in the... Uh, rather, they can actually just not pick both of them in the second picking phase and rather go for slightly better consistent damage dealer. I don't really like Rainer. Um, I don't like the Space Cowboy because of the fact that Rainer is not really very, very um, overwhelming. It's not the kind of hero like uh, you can see some of those other range damage dealers like uh, Vala. You know, it's not as good as Vala. So Vala, although being first picked away, they have the Johanna Kiltas as the second follow up pick. That's okay. But really, I would want to go for Brightwing. I would want to go for Brightwing if I'm Popoy, and I wouldn't go for Uther. I think Brightwing is good enough, a counter, natural counter against Illidan. And if I'm worried about them going for Uther, Divine Shield, I would have gone for Brightwing and Uther. Duo comp, duo support comp is still going to be okay. They've got their one CC, they've got Kill Thrust, they just need one good other damage dealer, which can come in the form of Lost Viking, which isn't banned in this game. And Dragon Shark, guess what? Lost Viking works really well in this map. So yeah, that's it. I would have drafted a little bit different. And yeah, so we are now going into this next game, Map Dragon Shire. Let's talk a little bit more about the Map Dragon Shire. And we'll see what we have here in this particular map. Dragon Shire is uh, a very big map with two very nice uh, you know, objectives. You have the Moon Shrine and the Sun Shrine. Sun Shrine is the one on top, Moon Shrine is the one at the bottom here. But uh, it's a very nice map, like I said. You have a total of uh, three Bruiser Camps. Two at the mid part of this map, one at the bottom, and as you can see in the background, also the game just started here. Uh, and two Siege Golems, as well as uh, no boss. So this is where, you know, teams really want map possession, they want map control. They want to make sure that, you know, they get control. And if you push out the top, mid, and bottom lane, you know, push past the first four, it's highly likely you're going to get the Dragonite. Highly likely. 
And that's where, you know, it's really important to play specialist in this particular map and push as much as possible and see what you bring to the table here. But both lineups that we saw from Popoy and Ghost don't feature any specialist. And we'll see how they fare in this game. So that's it, ladies and gentlemen, the semi-finals of the Malaysia qualifier. We got on the blue team, what seems like uh, Team Ghost. And uh, we got some really famous names in here as well, MTR. This is the guy who used to play in Arrow Gaming and he is playing as the Vala Lance as well. Also from the same team, it's in fact Lance something, Lance Zeru is behind, but I'm just going to call him Lance. Lance is going to be the Illidan. Fubbly Wobbly as the Bright Wing. Rod G playing as the Anubarak, last but not least, Zero onto the Zeratul. And on the red team, we got Team Papoy. And Papoy here will be having uh, five members as well. And Dao will be playing as the Rainer. Love Fiend as the Kilthas. And it seems like LAF, Left, will be playing as the Uther, Emo Y. Will be, known, will be known as playing as the ETC. He did quite well as, he, as the ETC before. I kind of like the ETC to hold in the mosh pit slightly longer before channeling up. I think it would have set up a little bit better, but definitely he's just got the job done. And they won at the end of the day. That's all they count. It's the 1% legend as they call him now. Uh, all take a Forsaken. A uh, little bit left behind. And as the name implies, he is indeed Forsaken left in the core. So hopefully they are all ready to go. And we're also going to talk a little bit about talent choices right now. We got uh, Bright Bab on the Bright Wing already. And it's going to be the Beetle and the Barak just yet. Not going to get an increased range on the Impale. And also get a very standard Illidan with the Shadow Shield uh, Composite Arrow for the buff on the multi-shot. And also see the Muxman on Zerto, which is a little bit tricky. Let's talk about the introduction, boys. We got Roggi now. Some trouble. Imoy, they're not able to do anything. Level to get a pullback. But because of the lack of a rain, they're not going to get a kill. But here comes the stun from Roggi. And the Barak goes into the power charge. Also can see Forsaken in a good position there for the Relin Uncondemned. That's it. Imoy needs to pull back. Zero dropping really low. Also going to pull back. No man did just yet. We still have Forsaken in a pretty good spot here. Condemned pulling one guy in. And that's all. Lance not able to get any kill at all. And that's going to be it for the introduction. And 40 seconds of counting. It seems like both sides you know, have a bit of a taste of the what the enemy can do. But not really spectacular. I think it's a good bounce back and forth. Not enough in terms of a kill just yet. But I hope to see things a little bit different as we go along. And now on the red team's talents, we have got a Proc Rock, which basically is a regeneration globe that gives him some extra healing per second for uh, Kita Solo, which really works well into the late game because it's a permanent feature. Season Maxman as well for Rainer, as well as the Reach going up for um, this Uther. I don't like this, I kind of like Conjure a little bit better because of the increased sustainability for the mana in the mid game. And Uther just doesn't want to fall back. Normally a team has to fall back if the healer doesn't have enough mana. So it's very important that you uh, don't be the burden that you are. Um, that's it, hold that thought, zero now going in, turning uh, Lafini into a pick there, not able to get a kill, and Gravity Lab Souls are not connecting, that's not an increased range, so we're going to talk about that in just a bit. That's it, zero, nice side step away, great team, oh DK not completely channeled up, they don't need two guys here, one should have gone for the DK, the blue team now going to try and deny it, yep, gets denied perfectly, a bit of a mistake on the red team side, but no big deal there. To finish up, we have Convection that basically deals some extra bonus damage stunned by Gravity Labs, but uh, it doesn't really, really work. It only works perfectly in an ideal world where you get in range for both Gravity Labs as well as Flame Strike. I hope it works well, but we'll see. And we got a very nice Regeneration Master up on Johanna's That means also she's not going to be very blocky and all. And that's fine, you know, this is a little bit more into a scalable late game build that Johanna really runs. And so far, so good. That's it, MTR. Good connection there on the um, quick. Flame Strike, MTR, some trouble already. The Shoe Glare coming in. Second Flame Strike doesn't connect, and the Vala is gonna be fine. That's a bottom lane. Rochi here with Ant Dao. And Lance also in this area. Ray team channeling up a possible DK. Forsaken in a spot there. The Dragonite comes out for the Ray team. And Papoy with the first DK under the belt there. Gonna try and push the mid lane for himself. Rochi gets shunned all the way back to Beijing. Some tower shooting at the Beetle, but he's gonna be okay. And left here, swinging by Uther. No, you can't kill the DK. DK is also not going to really reach in there. And another toss back. Emoi comes back in. I still can't decide if I want to call him Emo Y or Emoi. I'm going to do that in the next few seconds. Forsaken now getting some stuns there. Not going to get anything much done from this fight. But that's a nice stun by Love Fiend. And also going to see a rail in. Great control. Punish goes in. Last in the Rocky. Not going to get a kill. Forsaken, unfortunately, not going to pop the shoe glare. 
and in general the damage being dealt is only one uh not even one uh, yeah okay one tower i thought that's the hatred of the tower it's not it's actually the small little wall by the side so putting things back into context here, uh, I was talking about Sino Maxman being a little bit of a weird and greedy build for uh, the Zeratul. Zeratul don't really want to go for that because of one fact. You have a lot of pressure in the early game to be uh, staying in lanes. And that's not what you want as a Zeratul. You really want to go in for Regenerator Master, you want to be roaming, you want to be ganking. It works very well for this particular map. But it is not to say that Sino Maxman is not good. It's just very risky, very greedy kind of a build. Um, I think it will still work out well if Zeratu is soaking in lane, but if he's doing that, he's not really doing his job. And we'll see what kind of a uh, extra effect Zero's going to bring onto the table as the Sealed Marksman Zeratu here. Next up, I'm going to talk about more talents, but before that... Oh, nice silence onto Love Fiend. Love Fiend goes down. Great gang by Team uh, Ghost. And Ghost doing a great job there. That's it. Now, talking more about talents, if I have the time. Okay. So, we have got a Gust of Healing, we got Protective Shield, we got some bit of Barbs, which is very standard on the slope for the Impale. And a pretty generic Beetle build on Underbird as well. And a very standard, absolutely standard uh, Illidan. If I've got time, I'm going to tell you why it's standard. But right now, it seems to not be in my favor for that. We also got Multi-Shot Buffs up. Uh, Arsenal is not really fantastic. Some players don't like that, but I think it's okay if you're going for Fioris. Uh, Multi-shot build, searing arrows, sorry, sorry, searing attacks, my bad, works fantastic. And you also got the focus attack and follow through coming out for Zeratul. That's a lot of damage, there's a lot of build into a very standard damage on the blue team. For the red team, this time around, we got a mic check, we got a proc rock, and it's a little bit of a mix hybrid kind of a build for the uh, ETC. Emo Y in a bit of a trouble there, we'll be fine. Blue team gets the temple at the bottom lane, red team gets the one at the top, and back to the talent here. Uh, it's a very guitar solo kind of a build for the ETC. I kind of like the power slide a little bit better because of the extra CC uh, offerings that it does get. That's it. More on the volume of on the Emo Y, and also gonna see Joanna save the teammate there. Emo Y gonna pull back. And yeah, hamstring shot as well as focus attack by Rainer is gonna be fantastic. We got Clans, Amplify Healing, Nether Win for range. Let's say it, Rogi, denied by left here, wants the DK really badly, but three or four beaters now biting a left, ETC goes down on the bottom lane, but left needs to pull back, Bubbly Wobbly is here, Forsaken swings by, lands a shield glare, denies the DK, left still there, somehow the Uther needs to pull back, that's not a tree you can chop sir, and he goes down, Forsaken now, still trying to deny the DK, but no one getting the temple at the top lane yet, just yet, Rogi realizes that he's still getting blinded by this guy. Rainer goes down, bottom lane, huge victory for the blue team. The Ghost will try and get the Dragon Knight. And immediately Forsaken still doing a lot of work here. Unstoppable and all. Imoi swings by. They're only level 9, they're not even 10 just yet. MTR going in a strip, already bit of buff, slowing down the enemy. Johanna goes down. Imoi still wants to deny the DK. Top lane, still not getting the temple just yet. MTR may just get it and we'll see. MTR gets it. Top lane nearly denying the temple at the end. Oh, what a crazy investment by the red team to just deny that Dragonite and not really winning in the other lanes here. They are only still at level 9. The blue team has got all the heroic talents they need right now. Speaking of which, I think it's really devastating. Let's see. Uh, the fort is going to go down. Here comes the Metamorphosis. Lance going on. The so Love Fiend. Love Fiend is going to go down. Great Void Prison on 4. They're just not able to do anything here. Just not even level 10. And here comes the Hamstring Faster. Emo Y pulling back. Left pulling back. Forsaken also going to go back home there. And all five members of the blue team still alive there. And great push on the mid lane. Now going to try and extend the lead by a little bit more. Great team needs level 10. They get level 10. But what are they going to do right now? Handout is not able to do much of anything. And also you're going to see Lev in a great position there. Uh, Roggi is also a fantastic position. He's just potting back home. MPR dropping as the Dragon Knight respawns as the Vala. It's a multi-shot going down, best positioning, falling Swa coming out from the Forsaken and a great condemn again, but no slows on the punish, not being very effective. Phoenix wasted, so this is not really one of the players. That's a red team losing the heroics there, very tricky position for them to be in. Zero getting drilled in, great flame strike, doesn't really connect on Zero, connects only on the members behind. And here comes left, wants to kill the Zero tool, but lances in that area, and top lane, we got the Anubara with a nice kill onto the kill for the kill plus, Forsaken. Denying the strafe and also can see Levi. Here comes the ETC. No marsh pit just yet. There goes the marsh pit. Through man goes to Harlem. Shake down and a little bit of the shoe glare coming out as well. Um, still not going to be enough to save the team. 
more members dropping. We are going to try and get ourselves some beef today. Nope, they don't want beef. They're completely friendly. Blue team pulling back, level 13 and all, and it's gonna be the end of the long and this one we just saw. But yeah, if you look at the talent choices right now, it is Pling Hill, it's gonna be Locust, uh, Metamorphosis, Grave, and Viperus. For the raid team, it is gonna be the Mosh Pit, Hyperion, uh, Divine Shield, and Phoenix with a Falling Sword. Now, I don't really like the talent choices of the red team, uh, because of the fact that I think that you've got a lot of uh, space for CC, but where is the damage? You don't have a lot of damage, Hyperion is not gonna do a lot. I think the Rainer's Rage is gonna be a little bit better in a sense, and theoretically speaking, you have Mosh Pit, you got Phoenix, you have uh, Divine Shield, that's fine. I think three of those talent choices are fine. Really, Hyperion in this map only works if you're pushing, you're being very aggressive. If you're not, uh, I don't think it pays off well as compared to Rainer's Raider, where you will really want to try and kill someone in a team fight. Um, given the fact that you've only got Rainer and Kilthas being very consistent damage dealers, that's all. Uh, also, not to mention, they have they have the dive comp. You're up against the dive comp, they're going to be jumping on your Illidan. Uh, sorry, on your Kilthas, and that's really bad. Because if they jump on Kilthas, you're forced to pop Divine Shield on Kilthas. You're not going to have the, uh, the Divine Shield on the Marsh Pit, on the ETC. And that being said, ETC is probably going to get cancelled by either Anubarak or even a Brightwing. And that really is not going to work out well for the Raid team. A bit of a sprint coming in for the blue team. Spell Shield, six cents. Frost Shot. Frost Shot really works well with the increased range here. So I think this is a natural thing. This is going to be the multi shot for a lot of people before. And a wormhole for. Uh, increase viability there as the Zera tool. So far, level 14 on the blue, level 12 on red. They need to get some levels before they can take this next fight. They're probably gonna lose the fort, they shouldn't be fighting here. Falling Sword coming in. Johanna is just gonna be a little bit forsaken behind again. A uh, pun intended. Rochi now gonna try to move back with Mosh onto a bit of the blind shield just to save the ATC. Lance in front. The whole team split into two, but still no kills just yet. Down goes. The EPC, also Johanna, and that's it. Also, we did just lose Rainer, so three men down on the red team. All that's left is gonna be the Kilthas as well as the Uther. Oh my god, oh my god, the minion just knocked on left. He's being denied the DK, it pops Divine Shield, still doesn't get it, and this is not good at all for the red team. They're still gonna have to wait out 60 seconds for the Divine Shield. Loses the DK because of a bit of a poor choice in pathing by Uther. Really, the MVP has to be the minion there. Great swordsman, great deny on the DK. That's it, Blue Team going again more of the aggressive moves on the bottom lane. Uh, pulling back this time out with a 4 to 5 man blind from the Hugh Glare. Uh, Siege Golem doing some damage, not really able to do anything more than that. We also got 3 men on Bluffo Blood for the Blue Team as well as what looks like Critterize, which is my favorite level 16 teleport right wing. Well, that's hot. Rochi now, a little bit of trouble there. And then Evil Y not able to do anything. There goes the monster. A little bit of a wait. And the Void Priest from behind. Strafe coming out. And Forsaken going down, but not, not, set, not just yet. And here comes the Falling Sword. He's gone for good right now. Uther's gone. Evil Y pulling back. No much of a damage still on the red team, blue team. We still got Lance jumping on them. But Uther is chilling up the teammate. Good enough. And we're still going to see about 20 seconds before the whole team respawns. They may just lose the fort. And Dao there with Emo Y. Both of them in some form of a good shape, but not able to really hold the aggression off. Um, really have to be careful. You don't want to cycle death. Blue team should have gone for the temples, or rather the shrines. My bad. Rather than uh, pushing the bottom lane, I think that the, that the shrines would have been a little bit better choice. Given the fact that they're not really going to push into ETC and not going to push into Rainer. Rainer is not easy to kill. ETC is. Uh, even harder to kill in that sense. He doesn't have the power slide, you have the burst, but your skills are all on cooldown. So that's the main difference here. That's it, level 17 against 14. Blue team with uh, a lot of talent advantage and the Dragonite with instant DK again. Let's now pushing the mid lane with the remnants members of the blue team. Red team all respawn. Who knows where are they? I have no idea. Here comes the Phoenix. Some time to be fought here. And we're gonna see the shield glare. Pretty effective against Dragonite. He's gonna miss most of his uh, uh, siege buff attacks onto the tower. Rocky's still gonna take down the tower from here. Here comes Hyperion. Not really gonna do anything for why he's pushing for more space. Not gonna waste it on the DK. Won't pull back again. Great call there, but that's three men stun on the April by the Anubara. And Forsaken now. He's gonna try and pull back, but there goes the Divine Shield. And here comes the Falling Sword. Minimal damage being down. The kill class is just too far behind. Four men in a lot of trouble there. Dropping very low. Love. Left, sorry, may just go down. Uther's gone. All that's left now is the Kilthas and the Rainer. 
And 13 minutes in, the blue team surges ahead, way ahead of the red team. They still need a level 16 talent, not found yet. Me, uh, keep is gone. Bottom keep is now in a lot of trouble. 25 seconds before Uther respawns, and that is gonna be the whole team. Three men gravity left. Zero goes in, picks up the kill, and kill does really nicely. And the Zero 2 does the job really perfectly. They all get a pullback. Uh, DK will expire. Lance gonna respawn there as Illidan. And yeah, three kills up against 20 kills. This is looking like Papoy is running out of luck here. They're gonna have to do a lot better than that. I think they've got all the CC, they just don't have the damage. The Phoenix is just not in the best of position. And Hyperion is really not going to do a lot of damage. Rainer should have gone for a little bit of a different build here, but he went for Penetrating Round uh, Boost, which is okay. It's okay. It is kind of effective against Illidan. But, like I said, dropping Rainer with so much CC in the early stages of this draft doesn't seem to pay off. And this particular draft has got very good crowd control. I mean Mosh Pit, I mean Blast Shield. Falling Sword is not really the best damage spell in terms of AoE that this game has to offer. And that's where uh, it's a bit of a problem already. They still got good CCs on Johanna though. Here comes Unstoppable. And also there's the Iron Skin wasted. Uh, Silent going down. Falling Sword. Some damage. Love Fiend goes down. Blue team gone. A hunt and down now. Live in trouble and Rainer will bow down. And you have also the Divine Shield being used on Johanna. Johanna now in a lot of trouble. Illidan on a till there. Forsaken is not going to get Forsaken by the blue team. Lev is going to pull back as well. Imoai has got a Marsh Beat on cooldown. Five seconds before he's able to use it. And the blue team now may just go for four. 30 seconds before the red team respawns. Shield in a lot of trouble. We got catapults coming. We got Siege Golem hammering on it. Moshpi may save the game. It may not save the game even. We have to really see what happens. The Void Prison goes down and a great kill on this core here. And the core goes down at the end of the day. The blue team is going to win the semifinals and will now play for the grand finals. So unfortunately for Popoy, they will have to play in a third, fourth bronze match. And there's still good money to be won there. It just isn't as much as the first, second place. And also seating-wise, they're not going to get the best seats in the house for the national finals in Malaysia. But yeah, crazy game. Crazy game being played by girls. I think they played really well. They kind of steamrolled the, the entire competition uh, in this particular game. And we have replay. All right, that's good. That's a, that's a new one. Oh, guess what? Uh, this is a new feature we bring you guys. It's a replay. Uh, for today at least. So we have ETC, Emoai, Chenlinga, Moshpip missing and this perfect Void Prison really just locked down the damage. You have Rainer and Kilthas being locked in. By the time they are released, your tanks are all in a lot of trouble. They all just go down. Kilthas losing the frontliner will also go down. Crazy gameplay by the blue team. Just really, really on ball and on top. They've got so much blood for blood. Like I said, it's a dive com and a dive composition. All they need to do is just to jump on the back line and, and kill somebody. They didn't even want to jump on the back line in that fight because they know they didn't have to do that. The Void Prison was set up so beautifully that they could actually take the time to kill the ETC. ETC wasting the Moshpi was the biggest mistake there. But yeah, that's it. We're, we're done and we're going for the next semifinal game. By the way, guys, all the games here today are played best of one. So the next semi-finals game will be interesting. We got Team Burden up against uh, Hobos of the Storm. And Hobos of the Storm is the first time they're playing in this competition. They have a free seed, free buy into the semi-finals because of the uneven amount of teams. We got seven teams today. So yeah, uh, it's going to be Hobos of the Storm versus Team Burden next. And I hope you guys enjoy this cast. Don't go anywhere. If you like this uh, cast, do give me a like on the Facebook page at fb.com slash babelcast. And we'll see you in a, in a while, guys. Down come, but you can see that they more so protective shield lane. plans. They should uh, clash here. They have the talent and this actually might now, but not as well. right now. It's now it's still level nice playing field. They got some extra stats. Some of the worst players.